Thank you. We will resume. And members may wish to know that we are behind where Parliament voted to be at this point in time. Therefore, under Rule 9.8.5a, I am minded to accept a motion without notice to propose that the time limit be extended by 30 minutes. And I invite the Minister for Parliamentary Business to move the motion. Moved. Presiding officer. Thank you, Minister. The question is that the time limit for debate on amendments be extended by 30 minutes. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And I call Amendment 49 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with Amendment 37. Colin Smith to move or not move? It's moved. The question is that Amendment 49 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. I call Cocab Stewart. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'm sure that's recorded. The vote is closed. I call Ivan McKee for a point of order. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 49 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 25, no 93. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 50 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? So, sorry, Ms Burgess. Um, Yes. Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 50 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. Call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 50 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 26, no 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 51 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. 
The question is that Amendment 51 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. I call Co-Cab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. Point of order, Rachel Hamilton. Signing officer, my app didn't work. I would have voted no. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 51 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 26, no 93. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 52 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 52 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. I call Co-Cab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 52 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 26, no 93. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 53 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 53 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. Call Co Cab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed.
The result of the vote on amendment number 53 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 26, no 93. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 54 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with amendment 19. Colin Smith to move or not move? It moved. The question is that amendment 54 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. Call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 54 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 28, no 90. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 55 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 19. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Not moved. I call amendment 5 in the name of the minister, already debated with amendment 19. Minister to move formally. Formally moved, President. Thank you. The question is that amendment 5 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment six in the name of the minister, already debated with amendment 19. Minister to move formally. Formally moved. The question is that amendment six be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. I call amendment seven in the name of the minister, already debated with amendment 19. Minister to move formally. It moved, presiding officer. The question is that amendment seven be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. I call Amendment 8 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 19. Minister to move formally. Moved, Presiding Officer. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 8 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 56 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with Amendment 34. Colin Smith to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 56 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. Call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 56 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 26, no 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 9 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with Amendment 34. Colin Smith to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 9 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now.
call Co Cab Stewart. Yes. Thank you. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number nine in the name of Colin Smith is yes, 91, no, 29. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment... Sorry, agreed. My, my apologies. The, the, the amendment is indeed agreed. <laughs> um, okay, was that nine? Okay, I call amendment 57 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 34. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Not moved. Thank you. I call amendment 58 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 19. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 58 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. Co Cab Stewart? No. Thank you. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 58 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 28, no 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 59 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 19. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 59 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. Call Co Cab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 59 in the name of Ari Ann Burgess is yes 26, no 95. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 60 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with amendment 20. Colin Smith to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 60 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now.
Michael Cab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. I call Paul Sweeney for a point of order. Thank you, Presiding Officer. My app didn't connect. I would have voted yes. Thank you, Mr Sweeney. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 60 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 25, no 95. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 61 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with amendment 34. Colin Smith to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 61 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. Cab Stewart? No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 61 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 26. There were no 95, uh, no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 10 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with amendment 34. Colin Smith to move or not move? Moved. Um, the question is that amendment 10 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Are we all agreed? It would be helpful if you made that clear. OK, we are not agreed. Um, there will be a division, Parliament, and uh, members should cast their votes now. Cab Stewart? Yes. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed.
The result of the vote on amendment number 10 in the name of Colin Smith is yes, 91, no, 30. There were no abstentions. The amendment, therefore, is agreed. I call amendment 62 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with amendment 34. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Presiding officer, if it helps, I won't be moving 62, 63, 65 and 66. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. Um, I, I appreciate there, um, that that is helpful and we will try to expedite the process. Um, so 63 is not moved. Um, is Parliament agreed? Excellent. Um, I then call Amendment 64 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with Amendment 50. Uh, I remind Parliament that uh, the Amendment 64 is agreed. I cannot call Amendment 65, notwithstanding uh, Rachel Hamilton's remarks. Uh, Colin Smith to move or not move? Uh, moved. It moved. Um, the question is that Amendment 64 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are not agreed. There will be a division and members who cast the votes now. Cup Stewart? No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make, make sure that is uh, noted and the vote is now closed. Point of order, Kenneth Gibson. Sorry, uh, point of order, uh, I would have voted no. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. I'll make sure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment uh, number 64 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 26, no 95. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. Uh, I would invite Rachel Hamilton to confirm she is not moving amendment 65. Ms Hamilton? That's correct. Thank you. Um, I would also invite Ms Hamilton to confirm she is not moving amendment 66. Ms Hamilton? I'm not moving 66. Many thanks. Um, I call Amendment 11, therefore, in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with Amendment 34. Colin Smith, to move or not move? It moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 11 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division. The members should cast their votes now. Cockab Stewart. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that is recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment number 11 in the name of Colin Smith is yes, 90, no, 30. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed to. I call amendment 67 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. I already debated with amendment 20. Uh, Ms Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 67 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We 
we are not agreed, there will be a division and members should cast their votes now. Uh, no. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded. The vote is now closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 67 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 29, no 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 68 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with amendment 20. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 68 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division. Our members should cast their votes now. Cockup Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that is recorded. The vote is now closed. Point of order, Paul O'Kane. Thank you. My app wouldn't connect. I would have voted no. Thank you, Mr. O'Kane. I'll make sure that's recorded. And the result of the vote on amendment number 68 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 30, no 90. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. We move to group at six, environmental benefit exception. I call amendment at 69 in the name of Rachel Hamilton in a group on its own. Rachel Hamilton to move and speak to amendment at 69. Thank you, presiding officer. At stage two, the minister explained that a scheme could include a plan and used the example of a plan by a group of gamekeepers. This amendment seeks to specifically provide for this as a means of gaining an exception in the bill, whilst accepting that what amounts to a scheme will be clarified in the guidance that we are awaiting to see. It is important that the law recognises that land managers and keepers may plan to control predators for important environmental reasons, both the welfare of the species to be managed and species such as as I've mentioned before, the capercaillie or the curlew, which are at risk of extinction unless predators are controlled. And that these plans are as important as the schemes of organisations such as Nature Scott, RSPB, as referred to in the Bill's explanatory notes. There needs to be certainty that the work of gamekeepers, land managers and farmers for environmental benefits can continue where this needs the use of more than two dogs as part of that management. The vast majority of management in Scotland takes place on private land and without the work of land managers on the ground, the government cannot hope to meet its targets and biodiversity goals and protect our most vulnerable species. Thank you. I move the amendment in my name. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. And I call the Minister. Thank you, um, Presiding Officer. In response to 
uh, Rachel Hamilton's Amendment 69 and her explanation that she's just um, given us. I would say um, that the explanatory notes which accompany the bill, they set out that the requirement for a scheme means that the activity has to be planned and I stress the word planned, and designed for one of the subsection two purposes. Now, this could be anything from large-scale projects such as the eradication of stoats on Orkney, uh, run by the Orkney Native Wildlife Project, to an individual gamekeeper planning a deer cull. Um, as I said at stage two, it's my intention that further information about what may constitute a scheme for the purposes of applying for a licence under this exception will be set out in licensing guidance, which will be produced should the bill be passed. Uh, the guidance is, will be developed following discussions with stakeholders who will have the opportunity to review and comment on it. Um, Rachel Hamilton's amendment is in line with our, my understanding of what will constitute a scheme, namely that it could also be a plan or indeed a design or a programme of action, and I am therefore happy to support the amendment. Thank you. I call Rachel Hamilton to wind up press withdrawal amendment 69. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. I am very encouraged and grateful to hear the minister um, put some faith in, in gamekeepers and land manager, managers, and I would add that the faith has been difficult finding the majority of the content of this bill throughout its passage. Um, however, support for this amendment is a vote of confidence in their ability to do their job, which I appreciate, and I move Amendment 69 in my name, presiding officer. Thank you, uh, Ms Hamilton. Uh, the question is that Amendment 69 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? We are not agreed. There will be a division in Parliament uh, and members should cast their votes now. Yes. Uh, can I have Co Cab Stewart's microphone? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 69 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 92, no 27. There were no abstentions. That amendment is therefore agreed. I call Amendment 70 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with Amendment 34. Colin Smith, to move or not move? It moved. The question is that Amendment 70 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. Call Co Cab Stewart. Uh, no. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed.
And the result of the vote on amendment number 17, the name of Colin Smith is yes 25, no 95. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call amendment 12 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with amendment 34. Colin Smith to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 12 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We, we are not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. Call Co Cab Stewart. Uh, yes. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded. And the vote is now closed. Point of order, Marie McNair. Perhaps didn't refuse, I would have voted yes. Thank you, Ms. McNair. I'll make sure that's recorded. Point of order, Stephanie Callahan. Great use. Point of order. Point of order, Stephanie Callahan. Nothing's working. I would have voted yes. Thank you, Ms. Callaghan. I'll make sure that is recorded. Point of order, Michael Mara. By that point, refresh, I would have voted yes. Thank you, Mr. Mara. I'll make sure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 12 in the name of Colin Smith is yes, 90, no, 29. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore uh, agreed. Uh, I call amendment 71 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 34. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Not moved. That is not moved. I call amendment 72 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 72 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. Call Co Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded uh, and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment number 72 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 25, no 95. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore uh, not agreed. I call amendment 73 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 37. Uh, Ms Burgess to move or not move? Moved. The question is amendment 73 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division of members who cast their votes now.
Call Co-Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 73 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 25, no 95. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 74 in the name of Ariane Burgess. Already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Burgess, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 74 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. I call Co-Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. Point of order, Marie McNair. My vote now is uh, an error code, so I had to vote it no. Thank you, Ms McNair. I'll make sure that is recorded. Point of order, Christine Graham. Point of order, I was unable to vote on Amendment 74, and I would have voted no. Thank you, Ms Graham. I'll make sure that's recorded. The result of the vote on Amendment 74 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 25, no, 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. Uh, I call Amendment 75 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with Amendment 37. I'd remind members that if Amendment 75 is agreed to, I will not be able to call either Amendment 76 or 77. Uh, Rachel Hamilton, to move or not move? Not moved. Amendment is not moved. Um, I call Amendment uh, 76 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already uh, debated with Amendment 37. Rachel Hamilton, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 76 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. I call Co-Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. Point of order, Emma Harper. Thank you. 
for some reason it froze, I would have voted no. Thank you, Ms Harper. I'll make sure that is recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 76 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 29, no 90. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. Uh, I call amendment 77 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with amendment 37. Rachel Hamilton to move or not? Moved. Question is that amendment 77 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 77 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 29, no 91. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 78 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with Amendment 37. Uh, Ms Burgess, to move or not move? Moved. Question is that Amendment 78 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division. A member should cast their votes now. Call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. Point of order, Jenny Golruth. Connect. I would have voted no. Thank you, Ms. Golruth. I'll make sure that is recorded. And the result of the vote on Amendment 78 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 29, no, 91. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed to. I call Amendment 79 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Burgess, to move or not move? Not moved. Thank you. I call Amendment 80 in the name of Colin Smith, uh, already debated with Amendment 37. Mr Smith, to move or not move? It moved. The question is that Amendment 80 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division, and members should cast their votes now.
call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment number 80 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 25, no 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed to. I call amendment 81 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 37. Ms Burgess, to move or not move? Moved. Question is that amendment 81 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. no. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now. Cocab Stewart? No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. Point of order, Paul O'Kane. Thank you. My app wouldn't connect. I would have voted yes. Thank you, Mr O'Kane. I'll make sure that is recorded. And the result of the vote on amendment number 81 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 26, no 93. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 82 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with amendment 37. Mr Smith, to move or not move? It moved. The question is that amendment 82 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now. Call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 82 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 25, no 95, so no abstentions and the amendment is therefore not uh, agreed. Call Amendment 83 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Burgess, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 83 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now.
Call Co-Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded. And the vote is now closed. Point of order, Sharon Dowie. I would have voted no. Thank you, Ms Dowie. I'll make sure that's recorded. And the result of the vote on Amendment 83 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 25, no, 94. There were no abstentions. The amendments therefore not agreed to. I call Amendment 84 in the name of Ariane Burgess. Already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Burgess, to move or not move? Moved. The question is, Amendment 84 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now. And I call Co-Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 84 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 25, no, 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 85 in the name of Ariane Burgess. Already debated with Amendment uh, uh, 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 85 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division of members who cast their votes now. I call Co Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 85 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 25, no, 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 86 in the name of Ariane Burgess. Already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Burgess, to move or not move? Moved. Question is that 86 be, Amendment 86 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There will be a division. A member should cast their votes now.
I call co -Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote in Amendment 86 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 25, no, 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 87 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Hamilton, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 87 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There will be a division. A member should cast their votes now. I call co -Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment number 87 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29, no, 89. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed to. I call amendment 8 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment eight, uh, 37. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 88 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now. And I call co -Cab Stewart. Uh, no. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 88 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 30, no, 89. There were no abstentions uh, and the amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 89 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Hamilton, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 89 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There will be a division. A member should cast their votes now.
call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 89 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29, no, 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 90 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Hamilton, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 90 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division of members who cast their votes now. And I call Cocab Stewart. Uh, no. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I will make sure that's recorded um, and the vote is now closed. Point of order, Paul O'Kane. My app crashed. I would have voted no. Thank you, Mr O'Kane. I'll make sure that is recorded. And the result of the vote on Amendment 90 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29, no, 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 91 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Hamilton, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 91 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division of members who cast their votes now. And I call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 91 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 28, no, 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 92 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Hamilton, to move or not move? Not moved. That is not moved. I call Amendment 93 in the name of Ali Ann Burgess, already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Burgess, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 93 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division. A member should cast their votes now.
And I call Coca up Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. The result of the vote on Amendment 93 in the name of Annie Ann Burgess is yes, 25, no, 96. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 94 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with Amendment 37. Ms Hamilton, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 94 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. I call Coca Cup Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is now closed. Point of order, Colin Smith. I would have voted no. Thank you, Mr. Smith. That will be re recorded. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 94 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29, no, 91. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I now call amendment 95 in the name of Colin Smith in, in group 7 duties to report, grouped with amendments 96, 101, 103, 104, 100 and 102. I call Colin Smith to move Amendment 95 and to speak to all amendments in the group. Mr Smith. Thank, thank you, President Officer. As I have made clear at each stage of the Bill, I disagree with the licensing provisions contained within it. However, if the section is to remain, then we must ensure that the system works as it is intended to, with licences only granted as a last resort. Amendment 95, in my name which I move, would create a duty for Ministers to review the operation of the licence scheme created by Sections 4 and 8 every five years, lay a report before Parliament after each review and specify the actions that will be taken as a result of the review or the reason no action will be taken. In evidence to the committee at stage one, Nature Scott indicated there should be capacity for the licence scheme to evolve based on experience and said that, and I quote, there needs to be some means by which we can monitor the licensing regime, receive feedback on it and continue to refine it to ensure that it delivers what it says on the tin. It is important that loopholes do not appear in this legislation further down the line as a result of the licence scheme becoming outdated or unfit for purpose or simply having unintended consequences. The requirement in my amendment for ministers to review the operation of the licence scheme and then take the appropriate action in response would ensure that the duty to report is as effective as it can be. The first review must be carried out before the 31st of December 2028 and reviews must then be carried out every five years. For each review, ministers must consult those who have an interest in the licensing provisions and the report of the review must be laid before Parliament. The Scottish Government must set out in that report any actions they intend to take as a result of the review or give a reason if they decide no action is required. Requiring the report to be laid before Parliament will provide Parliament with the means to scrutinise the impact of the licence scheme and be confident that it is working as intended and remains fit for purpose. It will also make sure that any issues or unintended consequences arising from the operation of the scheme are identified and recommendations put forward as to how those can be addressed in the future. I would urge members to support this amendment to ensure that, should, including the licence scheme, uh, 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 be continued, um, no loopholes um, will be there in the future. Um, Edward Milton's Amendment 96 creates a requirement to report 
on licensing, but it doesn't seek to have a review. Other amendments from 101 to 104 also create a requirement to report. Now, I think there is merit in specifying areas that should be reported. I think some of the, the areas in the amendments go beyond the scope of the bill, however, uh, and more importantly, um, are very selective to try to make an argument rather than provide a balanced report. And they largely ignore animal welfare issues in relation to for the wild mammals ultimately being searched and flushed out, for example, in relation to the use of dogs below ground. I think if Rachel Hamilton had maybe engaged with others on the amendments, I suspect there could well have been agreement on what could be reported on. So I can't agree to the list in her amendments, eh, but it will be possible, I think, as a result of my amendment, to allow eh, such reviews and reporting to take place in the future. So I would move my amendment at 95 in my name, President Officer. Thank you, Mr Smith. I call Edward Mountain to speak to Amendment 96 and other amendments in the group. Mr Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I'll start by speaking to my amendment. Uh, I know governments don't necessarily like looking back at what's been achieved or not been achieved, but I think it's really important that we do do that. And my amendment brings forward the requirement on the government uh, after two years of the operation of any licensing to declare information about the applications granted and the applications refused. There are, there are slightly different areas uh, in each of those which can be seen in the amendment. I think it also should declare how long it takes for an application to be processed and would be very happy for the government uh, to add any other information that they feel appropriate. Now, I want to uh, just say on this that uh, the Cabinet Secretary said early that, earlier that she was convinced that Nature Scott had the facilities to do this. Well, I too am convinced that Nature Scott have the facilities to do it because I met with them and asked them whether they had the ability to carry out the requirements of this legislation and permutations of it, and they told me yes. As far as Colin Smith's amendments concerned, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm minded to hear what the Minister says. It, it doesn't necessarily uh, uh, chime with me that there should be a, a review every uh, certain period. This is legislation and if it's not working then I would suggest that the whole legislation be, should be considered not just the licensing but I, I'd be grateful to hear what the Minister says and I think the points the amendments brought by my colleague Rachel Hamilton are really interesting because this actually drills down into the effects of this legislation and the effect it will have on the countryside. And for those reasons, I support it. So I would ask members in this chamber to support my amendment on the basis it will give the parliament full information about what they are imposing and will also allow them to make decisions on the future, whether licensing uh, is appropriate and achieving what it, what it aims to do. Thank you, presiding officer. Thank you, Mr. Mountain. I call Rachel Hamilton to speak to Amendment 101 and other amendments in the group. Ms. Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. In speaking to my amendment, uh, I talked about the opportunity within this bill, that was Amendment 24, uh, to make further provisions to address the illegal act of hair coursing. Amendment 101 seeks to ensure ministers report on the impact of this bill on hair coursing using dogs and outlines a way of taking further steps to reduce occurrences in this activity. Amendment 103 adds further provisions on matters for ministers to report on in relation to the impact of the bill. I'm particularly concerned at the lack of consideration this bill has given to the welfare of dogs involved in hunting. I'm concerned that Basque, the Scottish Gamekeepers Association and Moreland groups believe that as a direct result of this bill, working dogs will face a cull. I believe it is necessary for ministers to report on the impact the bill will have on the uh, long-term implications alongside the impacts on the rural economy and livelihoods that depend on it. There is also a cultural heritage aspect to this bill. Unfortunately, my amendment fell on this particular point at stage two. However, I have brought it back because I feel that it is yet to be debated. And I believe that ensuring the Minister's report on the impact of this bill on these matters would be an important step to assessing the bill's influence on our countryside. Amendment 102 also seeks to assess the impact of this bill on other aspects of the rural economy likely to be impacted by the bill, including uh, the impact on, for example, veterinary services, barriers, apprenticeships, etc. We've heard from stakeholders, particularly Basque, the Kennel Club and Scottish Moorland groups, that 
one of the unintended consequences of the bill would be to erode the rural economy and a large part of our countryside culture through their film screened in Parliament, which many of us saw last September, demonstrated exactly that. Amendment 102 therefore also seeks to ensure this is reported on alongside any potential harm this bill may have on the increasing strain on rural workers' mental health, in including increase in loneliness and isolation due to the loss of social structure around uh, hunting. It is evident and also raised by the NFUS and, of course, we can only look at this through the, the lens of the call for a gamekeeper's task force. Poor mental health in rural areas is costing lives in Scotland and I believe that it is right that we ensure our work here in Parliament does not exacerbate that. I am afraid, as many rural stakeholders are, that this bill has the potential to make things worse. I would therefore appreciate a commitment from the Government to support this amendment in particular to ensure we assess whether this bill does harm mental health amongst rural workers and that constructive work is undertaken to minimise the risks of this. Amendment 100 focuses on ensuring that additional costs and resources to public bodies involved in administering the provisions in the bill are reported on by the ministers. On Amendment 104, the Scottish Government has said from the outset of this process, beginning with the Bonamy Review, that they wish to see the necessary level of protection for foxes and other wild mammals while allowing for the effective and humane control of these animals where required, and I quoted that. Lord Bonamy's report did not call for a two-dog limit. The aim of this amendment is to ensure the Government monitors the impact of this legislation on the ability of land managers to control foxes, protect livestock and wildlife and the environmental and socio-economic consequences of this bill and ensure it is working as it was intended to do. Um, I just wanted to comment on uh, Colin Smith's amendment. I just think that it lacks, um, lacks focus and I think that Edward Mountain's uh, report reporting on licences is much more detailed and uh, relevant to uh, the looking at the impact on the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. I have two members who are seeking to make contributions, and I will take both and would hope for brief contributions. Firstly, Ariane Burgess. Thank you. I'd like to speak in support of Colin Smith's Amendment 95, which creates a duty to review the operation of the licensing scheme every five years and take appropriate action. Our legislation needs to be watertight in order to put a stop to fox hunting and other cruel activities that involve hunting with dogs, such as badger baiting. The licensing scheme, unfortunately, offers one of the biggest potential loopholes. So it should definitely be a subject of peri peri periodic review. In particular, it will be important to determine whether the license it, for using dogs for environmental benefit is used for legitimate purposes and whether it's necessary to retain it. And in that light, I believe that Collins, Colin Smith's amendment is the right amount of periodic review uh, with a proportionate approach and not too prescriptive. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Burgess. And a brief contribution from Finlay Carson. Thank you. I rise to, to support uh, the amendments in the name of Rachel Hamilton and Edward Mountain. Um, I'm all for holding government to account and transparency and accountability, and I believe that what, that's what Colin Smith's amendment is trying to achieve, as it would oblige the government to provide an explanation for choosing not to amend Section 4 and 8 of the Bill. However, it would not oblige Minister to provide an explanation for changing the law. Uh, and and I'm, I'm, I query why he, he doesn't agree that a change in the law should be justified. And, and, and maybe in some of he would... Uh, explain why he omitted to provide for this within his amendment. Thank you, Mr Carson. And I am now calling the Minister. Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I should just say, before addressing the amendments in turn, uh, these amendments taken together, they would impose seven new reporting requirements at various timescales and covering a wide range of issues. Um, some are directly relevant to the provisions of the Bill, some are not. Um, if we were to undertake all of these, they would take considerable and, I will say, disproportionate uh, Scottish Government resources to fulfil, and there would be duplication with many of these requirements already covered by other statutory duties or regular reports. 
That being said, the Scottish Government is committed to an open and transparent approach to legislation, and where additional reporting serves a useful purpose, I am happy to support it. And Colin Smith's Amendment 95 is a good example of this. Uh, I understand the licensing provisions are a key element of uh, this bill. I recognise there is, on one hand, legitimate concern about how they may be sought to be used as a loophole, whilst, on the other, there are fears that they will not be available where they would be the only effective solution for protecting livestock and ground nesting birds. By placing a duty on the ministers to review the operation of the licence provisions contained in sections 4 and 8, we will be able to provide reassurance on how these licences are being used and, where necessary, take action to ensure they are, that they operate the way they are intended. And I hope that my uh, final words there about taking action will bring some uh, reassurance to Finlay Carson. Um, I support Colin Smith's amendments, therefore, but I am afraid uh, I cannot support any of the other amendments in the, uh, in the group. Edward Mountain's Amendment 96 would require Scottish ministers to, after only two years, lay before Parliament an annual report on licences and specifies in 19 lines of detail what that report should contain. Um, I do not think this is the right approach. First of all, the Scottish Government has made clear a, a commitment to review the operations of all wildlife management licensing carried out by Nature Scott. I have referred to that piece of work a number of times uh, this evening and the fact that this sector-wide approach is the most appropriate. Secondly, I have already said at stage two and again this afternoon that I will go as far as possible under GDPR legislation in providing detail about licences, but I must be able to consider that work in the round and be especially cognisant of data protection. Similarly, on Rachel Hamilton's amendment 101, uh, here coursing is undoubtedly uh, a cruel practice which persists in Scotland, and that is why it is so important that the Bill will help tackle it. However, a specific report on the impacts of this Bill on here coursing is unnecessary and would uh, be duplicating work already ongoing. For example, under Section 26B of the Wildlife and Countryside Act, Scottish ministers are already required to report every calendar year on offences which relate to wildlife, including information on incidences, prosecutions on research and advice. Yes, I am happy to. Rachel Hamilton. Um, Minister, uh, clearly the incidences of hair coursing and the prosecutions are not improving. Therefore, um, will the Minister uh, reconsider her comments when she has seen a few more of the figures from the uh, reporting mechanism that she has highlighted in the Chamber today? Minister. I think the, the point that Rachel Hamilton makes is more about what can we do to improve the incidences of prosecution of hair coursing and is less about the mechanism by which we monitor the numbers of prosecution and the incidences. So, um, no, my, my views on, on that amendment, they do stand. And uh, I think Rachel Hamilton rightly points out uh, the point about penalties, but I would in turn point out that the penalties for hair coursing were reviewed in the report by Professor Pusty. And changes that he recommended were made very recently in this Parliament in the Animals and Wildlife Penalties Protection and Powers Scotland Act. Um, similarly, Rachel Hamilton's Amendment 103 goes on to insert duty on ministers to report on the impact of the Act on cultural heritage uh, associated with hunting with dogs, as well as various other matters. I can't support this amendment. I don't believe that it's relevant uh, or necessary. The, the Scottish Government, as a matter of course, will always seek to monitor and evaluate the impacts of any new policies or legislation that it passes. However, this amendment would flatly introduce a duty to report on things which are not within the remit of the Bill. Um, on the question of the welfare of dogs and Rachel Hamilton's suggestion of a cull, I am not aware of any evidence that there, has, that there was widespread culling of, hunt, of hunting dogs when the two-dog limit was introduced in England and Wales. I comment that the Scottish Government supports the retention of working dogs or the rehoming of dogs that have come to the end of their working life. And I would take the opportunity to point out that Section 19 of the Animal Health and Welfare Scotland Act 2006 makes it an offence for a person responsible for a protected animal, such as a dog, to cause that animal any unnecessary suffering by action or omission or to permit another person to do so. And for all those reasons, I do not support that amendment. Moving as quickly as possible to Rachel Hamilton's Amendment 104, placing a duty on ministers to report on the level and health of the fox population. 
on biodiversity, in particular on ground nesting species uh, and farmers' income and other matters. I, I do agree with Rachel Hamilton that these are important issues. Um, on fox numbers, there is limited data in this area. However, research referenced by Lord Bonamy suggests a stable population of around 23,000 animals, with some 41,000 being born and around 18,000 killed by various means of control. Um, with regard to biodiversity and ground nesting birds, the picture holds. Predator control is important, but only a small part of that will depend on the use of uh, dogs as part of control. As regards farmers' income uh, and their livestock, many farmers already carry out control without the use of dogs, um, and those who require dogs will be able to continue to use too. Uh, so I repeat, these are important issues in their own right, but not appropriate for a reporting duty. Um, similarly, the, the, position, the government's position is similar as regards Amendment 100 in Rachel Hamilton's name. This is about reporting on the impact of the Act's provisions on the uh, Scottish Courts and Tribunal Service with regard to any increase in court procedures, uh, Scottish Government departments responsible for implementing the provisions of the Act as regards staffing time, Nature Scott with regards to increase in staffing time, etc. I don't believe this is necessary or desirable. Um, of course, prior to the bill being introduced, a full financial memorandum was undertaken and it's been published on the Scottish uh, uh, Parliament website. The memorandum set out the anticipated costs associated with the measures, uh, including the cost to Nature Scott and the Scottish Courts and Tribunal Service. Um, and again, this is demonstrating how much of this work is already ongoing. Uh, finally, Rachel Hamilton's Amendment 102 proposes another duty for Scottish ministers to report, and after only two years, on the impact of provisions on any loss of jobs in rural areas, any loss of social structure, and the mental health impact associated with that. Um, I've already said how we undertook a full business uh, regulatory impact assessment for this bill. It assessed that the provisions will have minimum impact on business. Of course, this bill is about ensuring the law is effective in preventing uh, the chasing and killing of wild mammals by packs of dogs, but there will continue to be need for legal predator control and for the lawful use of those dogs. Um, the impact of this bill on, any, on a particular aspect of, of rural society and mental health is, of course, another important, but I would say a uh, very vague and difficult concept to report on, uh, and I don't think that it would be sensible to require it by law, as Rachel Hamilton suggests. Um, there's also some, some drafting issues. For example, it's not clear what it, or who would be covered by the term apprentices, among others. Uh, so for that reason, I can't support any amendments in the group, with the exception of Colin Smith's. Thank you. Thank you. And I now call Colin Smith to wind up and to press withdraw amendment number 95. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome the Government's support for my Amendment 95 to create a duty for Ministers to review the operation of the licence scheme. Edward Mountain asked why um, I had specified the licence scheme, but I believe this is the main area of the Bill that we really do lack detailed information on, and I think it does require to be, to be properly reviewed. Finlay Carson asked the question... Yeah, I'll give away that one. Edward Mountain. Uh, I thank Colin Smith for giving way. I wonder if the member agrees with me that to be able to review the licensing, you need to have full details of all the licensing that's been carried out. So would my amendment therefore not support what he's trying to achieve? Colin Smith. In order to um, review, then information will be required. I think that's part of that will be covered by part of my amendment. I just don't agree um, specifically with within Mountain's amendment, which only asks for information but not actually a review itself. Finley Carson raised the point that um, why, why would the government have to specify? Um, if they, the reasons if they did not intend to take any action, but they wouldn't have to specify the reasons if they did propose a change in the law. Well, the reality is they would have to specify the reasons if they change the law, because that would, the parliamentary process would require that to happen. You couldn't change the law unless you set out the reasons for that law and what the specific changes were, and that would be scrutinised by Parliament. So it does require the government. They can't change the law without bringing that to Parliament and specifying the reasons for it. Um, on the other amendments, uh, 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 to create um, a requirement to report, as I've said, um, reporting is one thing, but I believe a, a review is stronger. Um, you know, there are some areas that do, um, I think, merit um, uh, report on a regular basis. Um, however, I don't happen to agree with the list that's specified in Rachel Hamilton's um, amendments. However, the review mechanism that I've set out in my amendment will at least provide a, a, an area in which uh, reporting could uh, take place. So I'm happy to press my amendment 95. 
Thank you, Mr. Smith. The question is that Amendment 95 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, the Parliament has not agreed. There will be a division, and members should cast their vote now. I call Co Cab Stewart. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 95 in the name of Colin Smith is yes, 92. No, 29. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call amendment 96 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with amendment 95. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 96 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The parliament has not agreed. There will be a division. Members should cast their vote now. I call Co-Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 96 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes, 33. No, 87. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I now uh, move to Group 8, laying assent for training dogs, and uh, I call Amendment 13 in the name of Christine Graham, grouped with Amendment 14, and I call Christine Graham to move Amendment 13 and to speak to both amendments in the group. Ms Graham. Uh, thank you, Deputy President. Officer. I'll speak to both amendments. I'll speak first to Amendment 13, which replicates an amendment I lodged at Stage 2 as a probing amendment. The purpose of that amendment was to prevent possible circumvention of the legislation by, for example, say the practice what's known as an in inverted commas, clean booting clause, inverted commas. That is having a human run some time ahead of a pack of dogs with no animal or artificial animal scent with that person, the purpose of which might, and I just say might, be very well to flush out and hunt foxes. When I lodged the amendment, the minister undertook to investigate. I hadn't really realised this might happen. And I'm pleased to see, and can I say, I now accept Amendment 14, and in these circumstances, I'm not going to move my own amendment. 
There's much in the amendment, I have to say there's a, I'm not soaking up, uh, the amendment, the minister is much better than mine. It, <laughs> it, it, there's a may by regulation, so this is important because at stage one, the committee did not have the opportunity to take evidence on this, and they certainly didn't have the opportunity at stage two. And I think to induce something mandatory when no evidence has been taken is not a good idea. So what the minister has done is in may make regulations only if they consider that modifying the definition of trail hunting would contribute towards the protection of wild mammals from unlawful hunting using dogs. And also states before laying a draft of the SSI containing regulations, the Scottish ministers must consult such persons as they consider appropriate. And I think that's absolutely correct. Um, so there's a flexibility built in there. It's open to evidence coming. It is to be done by affirmative procedure which allows committees and indeed this parliament to check out the evidence before that is brought into the bill. So I'm very pleased to recommend and support Amendment 14 and the Minister, and given that it's so much better than mine, I'm not moving Amendment 13. I call the Minister to speak to Amendment 14 and other, the other amendment in the group. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. As Christine Graham said, she brought these matters forward at Stage 2. Her amendment uh, resubmitted at Stage 3 gave me uh, much cause for consideration, and I want to thank her for that. Um, there are a number of reasons why I can't support Amendment 13 as it stands, and for completeness I'll set out some of the, the detail of that. However, I will principally go on to explain my Amendment 14, which in many ways seeks to rise to the issues Christine Graham has rightly highlighted. Um, firstly, because of the way we've drafted the principal offence in the bill, that is hunting a wild mammal using a dog, the amendment's reference to allowing a dog to hunt or being reckless as to whether it does isn't required. Um, as uh, Lord Bonamy highlighted in his review, hunting in this context is always uh, an, uh, sorry, an intentional activity. And there are some other uh, inconsistencies with the language that I won't uh, go into on, on the basis of Christine Graham's explanation of her intentions uh, this afternoon. However, as regards uh, following an artificial or human scent, um, I do support the principle behind Amendment 13. I understand why Christine Graham uh, brought it forward and her desire to be vigilant in avoiding a loophole whereby those who wish to continue illegal hunting could use drag hunting as a cover. Now, regulating the use of dogs to find and follow non-animal-based scents, including uh, human scents, it wasn't included in the bill, as it doesn't directly or indirectly involve the use of dogs to hunt wild mammals. And unlike with trail hunting, we do not currently have evidence to suggest that drag hunting is being used as a cover for illegal activity. Neither do we currently have evidence that wild mammals are being accidentally chased or killed in the course of drag hunting. Um, now, as the bill is drafted, if a person undertaking drag or clean boot hunting uh, and they allow their dog to chase or kill a wild mammal without taking reasonable steps to prevent it, then they may have committed an offence under Section 1. But I recognise the concerns that have been raised by Christine Graham and by the League Against Cruel Sports that people seeking to continue illegal hunting may, following passage of the bill, try to use these seemingly innocuous activities as a cover for something more difficult. Therefore, my amendment, uh, Amendment 14, if passed, will add a regulation-making power into the bill, which will allow Scottish ministers to extend the definition of trail hunting to include both animal and non-animal-based scents. This will allow Scottish ministers to bring forward regulations to add other scents, for example, aniseed, to the definition of hunting, if evidence should come to light that trail hunting is continuing uh, as a new, in a new form and that it poses a risk to wild mammals. Um, now, the power can only be exercised where Scottish ministers consider that modifying the, the definition would contribute towards the protection of wild mammals from unlawful hunting using dogs. The power also allows for new exceptions to be created so that legitimate activity uh, within the definition can continue. Now, regulations would require consultation and would be subject to affirmative procedure giving Parliament its place uh, with scrutiny. I hope that we will not have to use this power presiding officer, but given what has happened in England with trail hunting, where we know there are serious concerns that it is being used as a cover for illegal activity, I think it's important that we build safeguards into the bill to allow us to take action in future should that prove necessary. So I'd like to thank Christine Graham for bringing these matters to me, to Chamber. I'd ask her not to press her Amendment 13 
and just concluding, uh, as she said she uh, will not, and instead to support Amendment 14. Thank you. Thank you. One member has pressed their bus in to speak, and therefore I call Ariane Burgess for a brief uh, contribution. Ms Burgess. Thank you, Presiding Officer. For some context, trail hunting, directing dogs to chase after an animal-based scent, was invented in England after the Hunting Act came in in 2004. We have to remember that mounted hunts never went trail hunting until that was the only way that they could get around the law. So the Scottish Government is right to preemptively ban it by making trail hunting an offence in Scotland. The Minister's Amendment 14 is very welcome, as it gives Scottish Ministers the power to change the definition of trail hunting if related forms of this activity begin to be used as a loophole for fox hunting. But why not prevent, it, prevent this from the start? Why wait until after the fact and have to change the legislation later? Widening the definition of trail hunting now won't negatively impact on anyone except those determined to continue hunting with packs of dogs. Yes. Christine Graham. I, can I say to the member, um, obviously I share concerns, but I, I think the member must consider it, it must be evidence-based by this Parliament and tested by this Parliament. Very much so, I don't want any of this to happen. I very much agree with the Minister that we require, for the sake of all parties to this, to have evidence-based. And when that's evidence there, the flexibility is built into the primary legislation. That doesn't Ariane. need to be amended. Ariane Burgess. I thank the member for that comment. And, and I agree with you. I, I just want to really um, get the point across that mountain hunts were nev never went trail hunting until that was the only way to get around the law. And, and I just think that's really important for us to understand. I think that's been one of the challenges around this legislation is that we've been having to legislate for things that will potentially happen in the future. And I, I agree with the evidence issue and it is a challenging bit. But that's what uh, brought problems for the 2002 Act and that's why we're having to address it now. Thank you, Ms Burgess. Um, I, I now call Christine Graham, in fact, to uh, wind up by pressing or withdrawing Amendment 13 on the basis that the amendment is deemed to, in fact, have been moved. Christine uh, Graham. I didn't actually move it, President uh, Officer. Uh, Christine Graham, the, amendment, the, the member did speak to uh, the amendment. Uh, uh, okay. reasonable, I'll do reasonable what's never, never necessary to move us along, so I'm not, I'm not pressing it and I'm not winding up. You're withdrawing. Thank you very much. Christine Graham seeks to withdraw Amendment 13. Does any member object? No member objects. Amendment 13 is therefore withdrawn. I call Amendment 14 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 13. Minister to move formally. Uh, move, Presiding Officer. Thank you. The question is that Amendment uh, 14 uh, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division. Members should cast their vote now. I call Co Cab Stewart. Uh, yes. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Vote closed. Yes. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 14 in the name of Mary McCallan is yes, 92, no, 29. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. 
I now move to Group 9, exception for training dogs. I call Amendment 97 in the name of Rachel Hamilton in a group on its own, and I call Rachel Hamilton to move and to speak to Amendment 97. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Amendment 97 in my name creates an exception to allow the use of more than two dogs when training a juvenile dog for a lawful hunting purpose. It also outlines conditions within this exception which must be met in order to make such an activity lawful. This amendment is necessary to ensure dogs can be trained to carry out specific tasks which are essential to the management of wildlife or the protection of livestock and crops. Without it, this bill will place severely restrictive limits on the ability to train dogs for these purposes. And I move the amendment in my name. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. Uh, and I call the Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'll, I'll start by saying that the, the wording of this amendment isn't clear, um, so I'm grateful for, for Rachel Hamilton's explanation. Um, however, my reading is that in contrast to other exceptions which refer to searching for, stalking or flushing wild mammal, the amendment here does not specify what using more than two dogs might entail. Um, it appears that a person could use a pack of dogs to do any activity whatsoever, as long as they could argue that they were training a juvenile dog for a lawful hunting uh, purpose. I fear this would open a significant loophole, uh, which could potentially be used as a cover for illegal hunting, exactly what we are trying to stop. Um, there's also other significant issues with the drafting of this amendment. For example, there is no definition of juvenile dog, which means it's left open to interpretation, again introducing a level of ambiguity for enforcement that this bill, of course, sought to remove. Uh, the specificity and the clarity of language used in this bill has been praised widely and is one of the reasons why Police Scotland have said it will make enforcement easier. And for those reasons, I will not support Amendment 97. Thank you, Minister. And I call on Rachel Hamilton to wind up and to press or withdraw Amendment 97. Uh, no further comments, I press. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. The question is that Amendment 97 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now. I call Co Cap Stewart. Uh, no. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on Amendment Number 97 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29, no, 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. We now move to Group 10 on Court Orders. I call Amendment 15 in the name of Ariane Burgess, grouped with Amendment 16, 98, 99, 17 and 18. And I call Ariane Burgess to move, move Amendment 15 and to speak to all amendments in the group. Ms Burgess. Thank you. My amendments in this grouping are about ensuring that when an offence has been committed, animal welfare is considered by the court in the sentencing process. I'd like to thank the Minister for working with me to bring an improved version of these to Stage 3. As the Minister explained to the Committee during Stage 1, the Proceeds of Crime Scotland Act 1995 applies to this Bill. Therefore, the Courts have the power to confiscate property used to commit an offence under the Bill, such as a quad bike. 
Deprivation orders and seizure orders result in the offender's dog or horse being taken away from them, so they can't use that animal to offend again. My Amendment 15 and 17 add to the conditions on those orders so that a court must consider the need to ensure the welfare of the dog or horse, regardless of whether they ultimately order it to be put down, sold, or anything else. Amendments 16 and 18 tidy up the text, which is replicated in 15 and 17. Because of the way my amendment is drafted, the welfare considerations do not trump other considerations, such as the likelihood of the person continuing to use the animal to commit crimes in the future. The court will simply be required to consider the welfare of the dog or horse alongside all other relevant factors when making its decision. I believe these amendments strike a balance between giving the courts the power to sanction people by removing their property while recognising that seizing animals such as horses and dogs will have an impact not just on the owner but on the animal itself. And I move um, my amendment 15, 16, 17 and 18. Thank you, Ms. Burgess. I now call on Edward Mountain to speak to Amendment 98 and other amendments in the group. Mr. Mountain. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, firstly, to speak to my amendment uh, in Section 17, my Amendment 98 ins inserts a clause which would ensure that the court must state a reason for issuing a disqualification order. In the legislation as drafted, it has to give a reason why it does not uh, have. Uh, issue a disqualification order. I think it's fair and equitable that they give a reason why as well. My Amendment 99 uh, seeks to give some guidance to the Court on what would be a reasonable period of disqualification from owning a dog or horse. I don't believe that just leaving it open-ended is fair. I think first and second offences, in my amendment suggests, would be up to 18 months, a third offence three years, and a fourth at the discretion of the Court. I believe that sliding scale uh, allows people who perhaps for a first offence and didn't mean for that offence to occur wouldn't be precluded from owning a dog forever. That would be a severe blow to many people. On Ariane Burgess's uh, uh, amendments, I'd be interested to hear the min Minister's comments particularly on those because there is uh, within the bill uh, a certain description on uh, disqualification and destruction of, of horses and, and dogs. And I would like to hear if the Minister feels those are sufficient because the welfare of those animals must be paramount. Presiding officer. Thank you, Mr Mountain. And one other member has pressed to speak, so I call on Colin Smith for a brief contribution. Mr Smith. Thank you, President Officer. I support amendments 15 and 17 and the subsequent consequential amendments 16 and 18 in the name of Ariana Burgess. The bill in its current form only refers to the destruction of a dog or horse, and it is important that the welfare of these animals is also considered in the case of a sale or another disposal ordered by the court, not only those resulting in the destruction of the animal as is currently drafted. I therefore support these amendments. Amendment 98 and 99 in the name of Edward Moulton, I believe, seeks to constrain the discretion of the Scottish Courts with regards to post-conviction orders, which would not allow the Courts to take all the relevant circumstances into account. I therefore do not support those two amendments. Thank you, Mr Smith. I call on the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, firstly, uh, as to Ariane um, uh, Burgess' amendments, I listened very carefully to her reasons at stage two for her proposed amendments. I said at the time that whilst the wording did not work, I, I supported the principle and would be happy to work with her as head of stage three. Um, I understand that when considering deprivation and seizure, seizure orders in relation to animals, the courts routinely take into account the welfare of the animal to which those orders apply. However, these amendments make such consideration clear on the face of the bill. It is clear to me, as has been narrated by Ariane Burgess, that while deprivation or seizure orders relate to, can relate to uh, inanimate objects. When we are discussing live, sentient animals, we should have heightened regard for their welfare and therefore glad to have worked with Ariane Burgess on the uh, amendments and to support them. As to Edward Mountain's Amendment 98, this would require the court to give reasons when it makes a disqualification order on a first offence. Uh, this amendment is unnecessary as the courts generally provide reasons for any penalty or sentence that they choose to impose. 
However, with that being said, I know that the Animal Health and Welfare Scotland Act 2006 also imposes a duty on the courts to give their reasons for issuing a disqualification order. And so, uh, on this occasion, I am content to support this amendment. However, I cannot similarly support Edward Mountain's Amendment 99, which um, seeks to limit the period for which a disqualification order may be granted in various circumstances. Uh, as Colin Smith said, this would unnecessarily and unjustifiably fetter the discretion of the court when considering the appropriate period of time for which an order should be given effect. There may be many circumstances in which a long period of disqualification is appropriate, even for a first offence. And in any case, a number of factors will be taken into account by the court when considering the appropriate sentence. And it's not for us to fetter the court's discretion in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I call on Ariane Burgess to wind up and to press or withdraw Amendment 15. Thank you. I would reiterate the point that animal welfare should be borne in mind by the courts when issuing sentences, as after all, it's not the dog or horse that is guilty, but the person who used them to hunt. In that light, I thank the Minister for accepting my amendments, and I move Amendment 15 and accompanying amendments. Thank you, Ms Burgess. The question is that Amendment 15 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We, the Parliament has not agreed there will be a division. Members should cast their vote now. I call Cook Stewart. Uh, yes. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is now closed. I call Katie Clark. I call Katie Clark. I'm afraid we don't seem to be able to connect with Ms. Clark. I would have voted yes. Oh, Ms. Clark would have voted yes. Has that been? That will be recorded. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 15 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 92, no, 29. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call amendment number 16 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 15. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Move. Thank you. The question is that amendment 16 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The Parliament has not agreed there will be a division. Members will cast their vote now.
I call Cook Stewart. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 16 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 91, no, 29. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call amendment 98 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with amendment 15. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Move, Professor. Thank you, Mr Mountain. The question is that amendment 98 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are not. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division. Members should cast their vote now. I call Cook House Stewart. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 98 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes, 92, no, 28. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call amendment 99 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with amendment 15. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Uh, moved. Thank you, Mr Mountain. The question is that amendment 99 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division. Members should cast their vote now. I call Cook Ave Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Um, the, the vote is now closed. Point of order, Pam Duncan Clancy. Thank you, President Officer. I couldn't refresh my app. I would have voted no. Thank you, Ms. Duncan Clancy. That will be recorded. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 99 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes, 28, no, 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. 
I call Amendment 17 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with Amendment 16. Ariane Burgess, to move or not move? Moved. Thank you, Ms Burgess. The question is that Amendment 17 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now. I call co -Cap Stewart. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is now closed. Thank you. Uh, the result of the vote on amendment number 17 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 89, no, 30. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call amendment 18 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 15. Ariane Burgess, to move or not move? Moved. Thank you, Ms Burgess. The question is that amendment 18 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division. Members should cast their vote now. I call co -Cap Stewart. Yes. Thank you, Ms Stewart. The vote is now closed. I call uh, Hamza Youssef. My uh, online digital platform didn't connect, but I would have voted yes. Thank you, Mr Youssef. That vote will be recorded. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 18 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 91, no, 28. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call amendment 101 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 95. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. The question is that amendment 101 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The parliament is not agreed. Uh, there will be a division. Members should cast their vote now.
I call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 101 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 30, no, 89. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not uh, agreed. I call amendment 103 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 95. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. The question is that amendment 103 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament has not agreed. There will be a division. Members should cast their vote now. I call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. The vote is now closed. Point of order, officer. Point of order Kevin Stewart. It's come through. It's fine. Okay, thank you, Mr Stewart. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 101 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes. Sorry, 103. In the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes at 28, no 91. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 104 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 95. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. Thank you, Ms. Hamilton. The question is that amendment 104 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division. Members should cast their vote now. I call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 104 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29. No, 91. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 100 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 95. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. The question is that amendment 100 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament has not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now.
I call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 100 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29, no, 91. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 102 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 95. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved, presiding officer. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. The question is that amendment 102 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now. I call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is now closed. <laughs> Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 102 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29, no, 91. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. Uh, and I turn to the last uh, group, which is Group 11 on Crown Application. I call Amendment 105 in the name of Ariane Burgess, grouped with Amendment 106. And I call on Ariane Burgess to move Amendment 105 and to speak to both amendments in the group. Ms Burgess. Presiding Officer, Section 25 would establish a two-tier system in which law enforcement officers must obtain special permission to enter Crown land, but not any other land, to investigate any potential offences relating to hunting with dogs. The law should apply equally to everyone, but Section 25 creates a loophole that could make it easier for any illegal hunting activities on Crown land to evade prosecution, be that by persons in service to the Crown or anybody hunting with dogs on Crown land. The ferret revealed that registered fox hunts have recently been allowed on land owned by Forestry and Land Scotland, which is Crown land. Police must be able to enter onto that land to investigate any reports of fox hunting or other suspicious hunting with dogs. They shouldn't be impeded by requir requiring consent from the relevant authority. When it comes to protecting animal welfare, there should be no loopholes, not even for the Crown. I urge members to support my amendment 105 to remove section 25 and my amendment 106 is consequential on removing section 25. I move my amendment 105. Thank you, Ms Burgess. And I call the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I understand Ariane Burgess's concerns and the reasons why she has lodged these amendments. And I have carefully assessed the effect of the amendment and whether there's any need for them. Um, now, it's often necessary to make special provision about Crown land, uh, primarily for reasons of national security, in particular as regards the private estates of the King and also, uh, importantly, Ministry of Defence land, um, as is the case here. And I should be clear that the existing requirement for Police Scotland to gain consent before entering Crown land does not prohibit entry, but simply sets a precondition for entry. Uh, Ms Burgess's amendment, if passed, would remove the requirement for Police Scotland to have permission to enter Crown land, including MOD land, to investigate offences under the Bill. Um, I do not think that seeking authorisation 
from the body responsible for the land would undermine the operation of the bill. Uh, moreover, the provisions in the bill reflect the, the careful balancing exercise of ensuring the effective investigation of offences, on the one hand, while not impinging on security uh, and safety considerations, uh, for example, uh, military exercises being carried out on MOD land. Um, the provisions in the bill as they stand are in keeping with that contained in other wildlife and forestry legislation, such as the Wildlife Countryside Act 1981, Deer Scotland Act 96, and the Forestry and Land Management Scotland Act 2018. And they mirror the approach taken in other acts passed more recently by the Scottish Parliament, including the Hate Crime and Public Order Scotland Act of 21 and the Fireworks and Pyrotechnic Scotland Act of 2022. I'd also point out that the Protection of Wild Mammals Scotland Act 2002, the bill we are seeking to replace, that did not bind the Crown in any way. So today's bill represents a significant shift towards applying provisions to Crown land, and for all those reasons, I cannot support the amendments. Thank you, Minister. I call on Ariane Burgess to wind up and to press or withdraw Amendment 105. Ms Burgess. Thank you, and I thank the Minister for her response. Presenting officer, the law should apply equally to everyone. There shouldn't be one system for the Crown and a different system for the public, and we shouldn't restrict the police in carrying out their duties, even on Crown land. And that's why I brought in Amendment 106, so it doesn't remove provision for Police Scotland to enter Crown land. I uh, move Amendment 105. Thank you, Ms Burgess. The question is that Amendment 105 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed. Uh, uh, there will be a division, and members should cast their vote now. I call Co-Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms Stewart. Mm -hmm. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on Amendment... Point of order, President of was it no? No. I preside officer, I would have voted uh, no, my app doesn't seem to have registered a vote. Uh, thank you, Mr Mundell. Uh, your vote will be recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number one zero five in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes twenty six, no ninety three. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment one zero six in the name of Ariane Burgess already debated with amendment one zero five. Ariane Burgess to move or not move. Moved. The question is that Amendment 106 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division. Members should cast their vote now.
I call co cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Votes closed. The vote is now closed. Point of order, Rachel Hamilton. Thank you. I would have voted no. My app didn't work. Thank you, Ms. Hamilton. Your vote will be recorded. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 106 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 27, no, 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. And that ends stage three, consideration of the bill. And there will be a very short pause before we move on to the next item of business. Thank you. As members will be aware, at this point in the proceedings, I am required under standing orders to decide whether or not, in my view, any provision of the Bill relates to a protected subject matter, that is, whether it modifies the electoral system and franchise for Scottish parliamentary elections. In the case of this Bill, in my view, no provision of the Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill relates to a protected subject matter. Therefore, the Bill does not require a supermajority to be passed at Stage 3. And before I invite the Minister to open the debate, I call on Michael Matheson to signify Crown consent to the Bill. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, for the purposes of Rule Point 11 of the Standing Orders, I advise the Parliament that His Majesty, having been informed of the purports of the Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill, has consented to place his prerogative and interests, insofar as they are affected by the Bill, at the disposal of the Parliament for the purposes of the Bill. Thank you. We move on to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion 7600 in the name of Mary McAllen on Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill at Stage 3. I invite members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons. And I call on Mary McAllen to speak to and move the motion. Minister. Presiding officer, uh, I am pleased to present my first bill to the Scottish Parliament and to open the Stage 3 debate on the Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill. As members will be aware, the bill was originally scheduled to be introduced in 2020. However, owing to the pandemic, it had to be delayed. Um, but with that in mind, I'd like to thank my predecessor, Marie Goujon, for the significant part that she played in developing the provisions that are set out before us this afternoon. Because today's debate is the culmination of an eight-year process of consultation and policy development that started with a government commitment in December 2015 to review the Protection of Wild Mammals Scotland Act 2002. It included an independent review of the 2002 Act undertaken by Lord Bonamy and two public consultations which between them received over 25,000 responses. The large number of responses clearly demonstrates that there is and continues to be a significant level of public interest in this legislation. I have always been uh, very mindful of that and when I took over responsibility for this policy uh, I committed to listening to all views and seeking consensus where possible. Over the last year and a half I have met with a wide range of organisations and individuals both supportive and with concerns about the proposals. As far as it has been possible, I have tried to address those concerns in both the Bill as introduced and in amendments both tabled and accepted. I know that uh, the Rural Affairs, Islands and Natural Environment Committee has done similarly, and I would like to thank it for its careful scrutiny and consideration of the Bill. 
I am grateful too for the support that I have received from MSPs from across the Chamber on my amendments, and I would like to thank members of all parties uh, with whom I have had productive discussions throughout the Bill's passage. Uh, that has led to agreement on constructive amendments that I have no doubt have improved the Bill. Um, now, there is no doubt that there has been a clear cultural shift in our attitude towards wildlife over the last few decades. Practices such as hare coursing, fox hunting, badger baiting and dog fighting, which were once legal activities and quite unbelievably considered to be spectator sports, they are no longer acceptable. It has now been over 20 years since the Protection of Wild Mammals Bill was introduced to the Scottish Parliament making the, uh, Scotland the first part of the UK to ban fox hunting and paving the way for, for today's bill. I'm proud to say that since the passage of that Act, a whole generation has been born and grown up in a Scotland where the barbaric practice of using a dog to chase and kill wild mammals has been illegal. It's clear from the correspondence that I received uh, that many members of the public didn't understand why we needed uh, new provisions. They believed the activities were already illegal. However, as Lord Bonamy highlighted in his report, and as we've heard evidence from many, including Police Scotland, the Protection of Wild Mammals Scotland Act, which at the time was rightly regarded as pioneering, was flawed, and these flaws have meant that it's not had the impact it was intended to. If, my bill, if this bill sorry, is passed tonight, I firmly believe it will have an immediate effect by modernising and strengthening the legislation to, insist, to assist enforcement authorities in dealing with those who would persist in illegal hunting. I know that some people continue to have concerns about the, uh, the potential impact that the bill will have on lawful pursuits such as rough shooting, and I have listened carefully to those who have expressed such concerns. And I understand that the root of those concerns, I have said all along uh, the Scottish Government appreciates the contribution that rural sports make to our economy and that we do not, have a, uh, we do not intend to ban recreational activities. Yes, happy to. Finlay Carson. Yes, thanks for taking the intervention. You, you said that you listened to, to stakeholders. So can you tell us exactly what changes you brought forward in the legislation that was actually going to stop uh, effectively banning what uh, is carried out legally currently, and that's rough shooting. Minister. Presiding officer, I have had extensive engagement with stakeholders on all of the aspects of the bill, and probably none more so than on rough shooting, not least in the additional scrutiny session that Finlay Carson as convener conducted. And the purpose of that has been to explain to stakeholders how it can still take place within the bill, and equally I've committed to working with industry on guidance going forward so that they understand what to ex expect following its passage. But I've also been clear uh, that I un understand the need to control <coughs> predators, to protect livestock, and that it's sometimes necessary to manage both native and non-native species in order to protect vulnerable birds such as curlews, lapwings, capercaillie and others. I believe that the new two-dog limit in conjunction with a practical and effective but narrowly defined licensing scheme will allow um, the, the effective balance and um, will protect wildlife whilst facilitating legal control. Um, on the other hand, I've also listened to concerns raised by animal welfare organisations such as the SSPCA, One Kind and the League Against Cruel Sports that the 2002 Act did not put a stop to illegal hunting, and unless we build in stringent safeguards, then those activities would continue. That's why the bill sets a two-dog limit. That's why it restricts the circumstances in which a licence can be available, and why it gives Nature Scott the, limit to, uh, the power to limit the number of days a licence can be issued for, and to impo impose conditions such as the maximum number of dogs and uh, guns. It's also why the bill contains provision to ban trail hunting. I've talked about the need to ensure the highest standard uh, of wild mammal welfare and about the need to engage uh, to manage wildlife. These are not mutually exclusive. The bill has been designed to ensure that where it is necessary, the use of dogs to controlled uh, wildlife is done in a manner that does not lead to unnecessary suffering. Um, I've said it before, uh, but it bears repeating now that the, the chasing and the killing of wild mammals with packs of dogs has no place 
in modern Scotland. Uh, members from all parties across the chamber voted to support the general principles of the Hunting with Dogs Bill at stage one. And at this uh, final stage, I would urge all members to again vote in support of it. And I move that the Parliament agrees that the Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill be passed. Thank you. I now call on Rachel Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Fourteen years after the Scottish Parliament passed the Protection of Wild Mammals Act, the Scottish Government asked Lord Bonamy to review the Act and report on how it could be improved. Bonamy, Bonamy's review identified insufficiencies and uncertainties in the operation of the 2002 Act, and that is what this bill seeks to address. However, it it also unequivocally recognised the need to control wild mammal populations and the important role that legal and restrained hunting can play in providing that management. This debate provokes passionate views, and I completely understand why. We're all invested in the protection of animals and the need to prevent cruelty. But the framing of this debate often overlooks the practicalities and the realities. It is often presented as a one-track issue a narrow issue where we can either be pro or against animal welfare. And I'm afraid that argument is flawed. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help animal welfare. It does not serve our farmers on the front line and it does not help biodiversity or our environment. If this was a straightforward choice between protecting animal welfare or not, we would be 100% behind protecting animal welfare, but it is not. And we do this parliament a disservice by pretending it is. This debate is so often framed around hunting for sport, but what we are discussing here today is far removed from that. This bill should really be about the balance between animal welfare and biodiversity. If there is no hunting with dogs, predators will be left to attack other animals. Those predators, left unchecked, will attack livestock, like lambs and sheep, or ground-nesting birds, like the curlew or the capercaillie and other vulnerable species. This is not a simple bill that protects animal welfare. It's a bill that protects some animals' welfare at the expense of others. Then there is the damage to biodiversity, our environment and crops if controlled hunting to curb predators is no longer allowed. The RSPB recently warned that 50% of Scotland's species have declined in abundance since 1994. We should look at why this has happened. Scotland ranks 212th out of 240 countries and territories for biodiversity. We should be asking if this bill will improve that record, or as I fear, it will keep us lagging behind the rest of the world. When we consider the changes to this bill, we should look at the important role of managed hunting in Scotland's wildlife conservation toolkit. Yet the bill we are considering today seeks to degrade that toolkit just when we need it the most. Placing further restrictions on our ability to effectively manage wildlife at a time when iconic species such as the capercaillie are under threat of extinction is plainly irresponsible. One of the primary drivers of population decline in capercaillie, amongst other ground nesting birds, is predation by foxes. Yet the ability to prevent that predation, which was allowed by the 2002 Act, is harmed by this bill, since it places restrictions on how dogs can be used to control predators in the context of protecting vulnerable species. Presiding officer, no, no I'm, I'm not going to, I'm afraid, Mr Fairley, because I've, my time's been cut. Presiding officer, during the debate at stage one of this bill, the minister informed the chamber that she'd studied the 2002 Act during her legal training because it was a prime example of poorly drafted legislation full of deficiencies and legal uncertainty. My concern is that the bill we have before us today will be studied by ecologists in years to come as a bill that ignored the views of experts and pinned the final nail in the coffin for many of Scotland's in endangered species. It is a bill that ignores the realities of hunting with dogs outlined by organisations such as the SEA, BASC and the NFUS and others, while legislating on matters which seem to be misunderstood by key decision makers. As I've mentioned during stage one proceedings, animal welfare has been at the heart of this debate. I've already discussed the havoc wrought upon vulnerable species and the NFUS have voiced concern about the effects of this bill on the ability of farmers to protect livestock. Presiding officer, I will come to a close because I know time is tight. The Scottish Government may have been right to revisit the 2002 Protections of Wild Mammals Act off the back of the Bonamy Review, but it has been done 
in a way that has typically of this SNP government ignored the evidence around the issue with the views of countless stakeholders and rural Scotland ignored. We don't have faith in this bill. It will not help animal welfare and we fear it will have a negative impact on biodiversity, our natural environment and those who protect it, support and look after it. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. In 2002, this Parliament sought to end the barbaric practice of mounted hunts using packs of dogs to chase foxes to exhaustion and then for those dogs to be set on the fox to brutally kill it. Two decades on, some hunts continue to ride roughshod over the letter and the spirit of that ban. Today was a chance to, to right this wrong, to scrap the loopholes being exploited, to end the cruelty of hunting with packs of dogs once and for all. But sadly, this bill does not do that. It won't close all the loopholes that exist. It won't end the use of packs of dogs. It merely licenses them. But, presiding officer, you cannot license cruelty. You can't say on the one hand, as the SNP do, that using a pack of dogs is cruel because it increases the risk of dogs chasing and killing a wild mammal, but on the other hand say we're going to continue to allow packs of dogs to be used if the hunt has a license. Handing out a license won't make that any less cruel. Those who have exploited the current legislation passed over 20 years ago will do all they can to exploit this legislation through licensing. And they have every reason to believe that could well be successful, because the SNP and Tories wouldn't accept amendments that sought to ensure any licensing application would be subject to best practice and ethical wildlife management, even although that is the direction of travel I am confident we will ultimately go. Nature Scott, when they gave evidence to the committee, said that their approach is, and I quote, fairly well aligned with those ethical principles. Well, today was a test of how committed the government are to that approach, and they have not met that test. When the minister gave evidence to the committee on the 29th of June, she said, and I quote, a license has to be construed as the option that is available when there are no other options. But this bill is almost silent on the criteria to determine this, and an opportunity to do so to genuinely make it a last resort has been missed. The bill also contains a number of cruel exemptions, such as continuing to allow birds of prey as a method of killing, which is no less cruel than using dogs to kill, and allows the continuation of the use of dogs below ground to control wild mammals. The bill may well limit the number of dogs below ground to one, but if it is cruel to use more than one dog below ground, then it is cruel to use any number of dogs below ground. It just lacks credibility to say you can control a dog below ground that won't see you or won't hear you. And the government now admit this with the revised explanatory notes to the bill. The bill does improve, however, on existing legislation with the limit in most cases, but sadly not all, to the use of two dogs for searching and flushing out foxes and the inclusion of new offences that will prevent trail hunting emerging in Scotland, as it has in England. The bill has also strengthened, albeit marginally, since it was introduced as a result of amendments by several members. I am pleased my amendments to review licensing every five years has been accepted, as has my amendments to make sure that dogs are not used to kill injured animals. President officer, ending hunting with packs of dogs was unfinished business when this bill was first proposed. There is no place in modern Scotland. That is the view of the public, urban and the vast majority of people in rural communities. Those of us who represent rural areas know it is not who we are and it is not what our communities believe in. This bill does nudge the bar well towards less hunting with packs of dogs, so it will receive Labour support. But the use of licensing does mean the risk remains, and an opportunity to end it once and for all has been missed. So sadly, it does remain unfinished business. President officer, I want to end by thanking those who have contributed to this bill, those who play such an important part living and working in our countryside, including those tasked with managing our land. And the many animal welfare charities, such as League Against Cruel Sports, One Kind, and others who give a voice to those who can't speak for themselves and campaign with such passion day in and day out. I'm really proud of that campaign, what they do to improve animal welfare, but we have some way to go. So, my advice to them is keep up the fight. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on Ariane Burgess. Thank you. Presiding officer, for the mass, vast majority of the Scottish public, it's unacceptable that fox hunting still takes place in our country. Most of us believed fox hunting was banned just over 20 years ago. 
but loopholes in the law have enabled fox hunting to continue on horseback or on foot under the cover of legal activities. Today, these loopholes begin to narrow. The Hunting with Dogs Bill will help the police and courts prosecute illegal activity. It will give greater protection to foxes, hares, badgers and other wild animals. This is thanks to the tireless campaigning of animal welfare organisations such as League Against Cruel Sports, One Kind and Scottish Badgers. And it's thanks to the Scottish Government for their strong position that chasing and killing wild mammals with dogs has no place in modern Scotland. The bill has been strengthened through the parliamentary process. We've added a duty to review the licensing scheme and take the required action, which could potentially mean removing it altogether. And through my amendments, we've added a duty on the courts to consider animal welfare sentencing. The bill is an improvement on what's currently in place. But will it stop fox, fox hunting? Sadly, that remains to be seen. Despite the best efforts of the Scottish Greens and Labour to close the loopholes, the, the bill still contains many that are bound to be explo exploited by those who are determined to continue their cruel pastime. I tried to remove the exceptions that allow forms of hunting with dogs for sport, hunting with dogs underground and hunting with dogs under licence. I tried to remove the requirement for the police to obtain special permission to investigate any hunting with dogs on Crown or government land. This isn't a hypothetical concern. Fox hunts have been allowed on land owned by Forestry and Land Scotland. So why set up additional barriers to investigating such cases? Why create a loophole for the Crown? King Charles previously lobbied to scrap the Westminster Bill to ban fox hunting in England and Wales. But in Scotland, 87% of people and 100% of young people want fox hunting banned. The Scottish Parliament and the Scottish Government must be able to develop and pass our own laws to set the direction of travel for the Scotland that we want and the Scottish public want to see in the future. Without our democracy being undermined by interference from Westminster or by historic privileges for the monarchy. For those of us in this chamber who want this country to gain independence, I ask you, would we want fox hunting to continue in an independent Scotland? Of course not. If we want to live in a modern, independent Scotland, we must start legislating for that future. The upcoming species licence review, which the Minister spoke about earlier today, a commitment of the Scottish Government and Greens, will be the next opportunity to take a closer look at licensed hunting and push for the ethical wildlife management. We must monitor the impact of this bill closely, particularly the licensing scheme, any evidence that it's being used as a loophole must be acted on immediately instead of waiting 20 more years. Presiding officer, the Scottish Greens have always taken a strong position against blood sports. That's why they're excluded from the Butte House Agreement, so we can go further to stamp out animal cruelty. The Greens are determined to end licensed hunting with dogs as soon as practically possible and to finally deliver a watertight ban on fox hunting. Thank you. I now call on Beatrice Wishart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As Deputy Convener of the RAIN Committee, I thank the clerks, the bill team, my committee colleagues and Convener Finlay Carson for their work on the bill. I'm grateful to all organisations and individuals who submitted evidence and provided briefings throughout the stages of this bill. Scottish Liberal Democrats support the aims of the Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill to tighten up inconsistencies in the previous 2002 Act in a way that balances the need to protect animal welfare with the need for effective pest control in our rural and agricultural areas. Scottish Liberal Democrats are in favour of a workable licensing scheme based on evidence that enables the use of more than two dogs in certain circumstances. A sensible scheme is needed to ensure that effective pest control can continue the proposed licensing scheme in the bill reflects evidence the committee heard that more than two dogs are required in some instances to flush a wild mammal from cover for quick flushing and dispatch. The initial, in, the initial draft stated licenses for management of wild mammals would be granted for 14 days within 14 consecutive days. From conversations with stakeholders, this appeared unnecessarily restrictive. I supported amendments from the Minister at Stage 2 to change this to 14 days in six consecutive months. 
I believe this gives the necessary flexibility to create a workable licensing scheme for pest control. Another aspect of the licences is that an application for a licence can be made by a sole landowner or jointly by a group of landowners or by the person who will carry out the hunting activity with permission of the landowner. A key consideration for the licence is the terrain where the activity will take place, so licences will correspond to a particular area. The requirement to get landowner permission for hunting with dogs was unclear to me in situations where there are joint landowners for one piece of land or where a piece of land is split between multiple landowners. I laid amendments at stage two to clarify this and was satisfied with the Minister's explanation that when interpreting legislation, the use of the singular, singular includes the plural and vice versa. This means that reference to getting permission from the landowner can be read as owners, depending on circumstances. And I'm grateful to the Minister for meeting with me to discuss the bill and for providing explanations of our amendments. At stage one, I called for criteria to be developed for the licensing scheme in collaboration with stakeholders. I welcome the Minister's commitment to working with stakeholders to create guidance on licensing. The committee, will, the committee also heard about rough shooting and concerns about how it will operate under the Bill, and I welcome the Minister's commitment that she will continue to work with industry on this issue. We did not support amendments today which would further expand or restrict the current scope of the Bill, and we believe it achieves its aims to balance priorities. We supported amendments creating obligations on Scottish Ministers to conduct reviews every five years of the licensing scheme's operation and to report on Part 1 of the Bill within two years. Reporting and analysis are important to ensure that the Bill achieves its aims and licences are workable. Presiding officer, respecting and enabling those who make their living off the land at the same time as having good animal welfare standards are not mutually exclusive. The vast majority of people who work on the land live in harmony with that land. Scottish Liberal Democrats will support the Hunting with Dogs Bill today at Stage 3. Thank you. Thank you. We now move to winding up speeches and I call on Edward Mountain. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And as I've only been allowed two minutes for my closing, I, I'm afraid I will take no interventions. I have to say from the beginning, I'm deeply disappointed by the final drafting of this bill following the Stage 3 scrutiny. I don't support animals, animals' cruelty, but what this bill has done is seriously limited our ability to manage wildlife, thus putting at risk the protection and enhancements of our native flora and fauna. The Parliament, in their wish to ban mounted hunts, has shown the true divide, I believe, between the countryside and urban voters. Here we are, spending hours discussing hunting with dogs, while the NHS is under pressure, school teachers are on strike, and our ferry service crumbles. It has also shown this whole debate how tone-deaf the government is to the concerns of the countryside. I believe a bill fuelled by ideology and not practicality. Presiding officer, I cannot and will not support this bill. I am afraid it will lead to a further disconnect between our countryside and, and the urban areas, a disconnect I believe this government will ultimately answer for. Thank you, presiding officer. Thank you. And I call on the Minister to wind up. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It has been a genuine privilege to work on the Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill. And in closing, I would like to thank all stakeholders with whom I have had extensive engagement. Uh, I would also like to thank the Scottish Government Bill team, who have worked mm -hmm. incredibly hard. Um, I hope they will take tonight off before we get back to Grousemere reform tomorrow. Um, no, I jest. But in all seriousness, there is a huge amount of work involved, and I would like to thank them for that. Um, Presiding officer, my motivation from the beginning has been to finally end illegal hunting with dogs in Scotland, which, as we know, has been illegal for 20 years, but despite best efforts, has persisted in Scotland. This bill, therefore, sought to close loopholes from previous legislation, as well as take action to prevent others from opening, future-proofing, as it were, our ban. So, in steering the bill through, my officials and I have sought from the very beginning to end legal activity, illegal activity once and for all, and that in the, in the pursuit of the highest animal welfare standards, but without unduly impinging on legal and legitimate activity, acknowledging the needs of farmers, land managers and environmental groups. 
And this has required widespread engagement with stakeholders and other MSPs. It's required close attention to the committee observations and the sessions they undertook. And it has acquired assessment ultimately of what are finely balanced issues. An example of that is one of the principal provisions in the bill, the, the two dog limit. It puts the onus of control far more on the person purporting to hunt and it makes detection of a breach far more readily detectable by law enforcement. It's a significant step forward. But in instituting the two dog limit, I would not ignore evidence of Lord Bonamy as regards terrain and that in certain circumstances two dogs would not be sufficient. So it's right that it applies consistently across the piece in all types of hunting and without exceptions applied to certain types as was called upon for rough shooting. But equally, the licensing scheme provides that very narrow, drawn but workable solution as the bill provides there is no other uh, work, uh, effective option. Likewise, I have sought to strike the, the greatest possible progress on the issues of dogs underground. I heard the welfare concerns on one hand, uh, but equally the lack of alternative options on the other and the risks of worsening welfare outcomes. Uh, therefore, I worked to find a solution which protected the welfare of dogs and the fox as far as possible, including by reducing the numbers of dogs to one, excluding mink from the exception and providing conditions on ensuring welfare. Again, in trail hunting, we have preempted potential loopholes. We have recognised what has happened in England and we've taken action to stop it happening here. And in we have future-proofed that by further taking a regulation-making power for any future issues on drag hunting. And again, I'd like to thank my colleague Christine Graham for her work on that. Um, presiding officer, I'm a little disappointed that the, the opposition have uh, descended into a little bit of negativity in their co closing comments. But in contrast and an antidote to that, I would like to quote Lord Bonamy, who said, May I say that I regard the bill as a very well-crafted piece of legislation. It solves the problems that I identified about the loose and variable use of language. It makes everything much clearer and simpler which in itself should be a great incentive for better enforcement of the law, because the police and the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service were struggling with the effective detection and prosecution of offenders. Um, presiding officer, in, in closing, on the 13th of February 2002, our predecessors in this Parliament voted to pass the Protection of Wild Mammals Scotland Act 2002, and I hope that we will follow their lead today and vote to pass the Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the debate on Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill at stage three. It is now time to move on to the next item of business, and I am minded to accept a motion without notice under Rule 11.2.4 to bring forward decision time to now, and I invite the Minister for Parliamentary Business to move the motion. I moved. Presiding officer. Thank you, Minister. The question is that decision time be brought forward to now. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And there is one question to be put as a result of today's business. The question is that motion 7600 in the name of Mary McAllen on Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill be agreed and members should cast their votes now. Before I close the vote, I call CoCab Stewart to cast a proxy vote on behalf of Stuart McMillan. Uh, Stuart McMillan votes yes. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. The vote is closed.
the result of the vote on motion 7600 in the name of Mary McAllen is yes 90, no 30. There were no abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed and the Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill is passed. That concludes decision time and I close this meeting.